Hello everyone, this is Video Boy, and welcome to this LibGDX tutorial. So many of you guys were asking, hey man, how do I actually set up Android deployment uh, for the app that we made in the tutorial series? Uh, so today I'm going to explain to you guys the two ways to do this. Uh, first I'm going to show you guys how to do it with the virtual device, and then I'll show you guys how to do it with an actual device like a phone or a tablet. Um, so let's get right into it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go into the Android SDK folder. Um, so we set up the Android SDK in the first tutorial. I'll put a card up for that video. Um, and you want to go into the SDK manager. But keep this folder open because we're going to need it. Just so you guys know, this tutorial will also work on Android Studio and also uh, it'll work with any game, not just the ones we did in the tutorial series. Okay, so it's going to load up its stuff. Um, basically, you guys can update this stuff if you want, but it's not necessary for this tutorial, so just uncheck everything. So for this, uh, for the Android virtual device, there's a couple things, there's just one thing that we really need. Uh, so depending on what Android version you want to run, uh, choose uh, one of these three. So we're going to use Android 5. So if you're running on an Intel processor, you want to choose one of these. And if your Intel processor is 64-bit, choose the 64 one. I already have it installed because I have an Intel 64-bit processor. If you're running on Intel 32-bit, use this. And if you're running on any other processor, whether it's AMD or something else, install this one. If you're not sure what your processor is, uh, you can go into a folder and do this PC, right click, do properties, and it'll tell you your processor. Uh, and also there's RAM, so try to remember the RAM number. If You you probably already know what the RAM number is if, you've, uh, uh, if you're doing this tutorial series, uh, but it could be helpful later on if you're trying to assign more RAM to the uh, device. Okay, so uh, just check mark whichever one you need to install. Click install, accept the license, and then it'll be all installed. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is go into the AVD manager. So this is where you actually create your virtual devices. So I already have one set up. Let's create another one though. Uh, so let's just call it Nexus Test. Test. You want to choose the device, so they have pretty much all the Nexus devices, uh, even have Android Wear, a bunch of stuff like that. The one that we're going to do for this series is the Nexus 5. Uh, so Nexus 5 is a pretty standard phone, it's a good size for testing on a monitor as well. Uh, you want to select your target, so Android 5, choose the uh, CPU. Uh, that's the only one we have installed, so pick that one. It's going to ask you to install a skin. Uh, I like to do skin with dynamic hardware controls. That just makes it so everything fits nice. Uh, it says that it's already used, so I'll just add it to. It'll probably not say that for you, it's because uh, it's not the first time I create a virtual device called that, I guess. And um, if you have a graphics card, I suggest you turn on this. It'll make everything a lot snappier. And that's pretty much all. So. You can allocate more RAM than this, but I suggest that you just keep it to 2 gigs on Windows, uh, since it gives you a warning here anyways. Uh, and yeah, so just click OK. It's going to give you a little bit of feedback about everything about the virtual device. Alright, so now you can just click on it, and then click Start. So I'm going to stop and start the video again. Uh, for some reason there's a bug with my recording software. Uh, whenever I start a virtual uh, device, so I'm just going to uh, pause the video and then bring it back once the device is loaded up. Another thing, uh, in here you can actually scale the device to the real size. Uh, so that's the screen size of the device, so it's a Nexus 5, it's 5 inches. And then here you put your monitor DPI. You can probably, uh, actually you can just click here, select your screen size. I think I'm 22 inches. I don't have it, I guess 21. Your resolution and it'll figure out your DPI. So I like to do that, it feels more natural, it's the actual size of the device. And uh, just click launch. 
Okay, so now we have, oops, now we, what? All right, so now we have the virtual device running. That was kind of weird, I guess I was scrolling off. Uh, so now it's running. Uh, if you guys saw before, I have an i3 processor and it's running fairly well, so you don't need a super good processor. Uh, having a decent graphics helps a lot. I tried running this without uh, use host GPU and it was fairly laggy, so if you have a graphics card, it helps out a lot. Um, and also some decent amount of RAM, but uh, if you have 4 gigs of RAM, that should even be enough. So uh, don't worry too much about running it because it's just Android, it's not very hard to run. Okay, so now we have it actually running. Let's minimize this. And uh, let's click Start. If you guys don't have it there, you can just go in the Android thing here. Right click, do run as an Android application, then it's going to start showing up in here in the recent runs. And there you go, we have it running in the virtual device. So it's basically the exact same game. You just use your mouse. So the virtual device is wonderful if you want to test on different Android versions or different screen sizes uh, before you actually release the game. So it ensures that you have good quality on all different ty types of devices. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to do it with USB. So I don't actually have good screen recording software on my tablet, so I'm just going to show you guys through the virtual device. So what you want to do is you want to uh, go in the settings app and scroll down. Then you're going to get to about phone. Uh, if you already have developer options, don't worry about this next couple steps. Click in about phone or about tablet, whatever it says, the about menu. Then go down to build number. Then you want to click it a few times. It's going to say how many more times you have to click until you're a developer. And then once you've, once you've clicked enough times, it's going to say you are now a developer. So then you can go back and you'll have these developer options. So this menu is pretty cool. There's a lot of neat stuff you can play around with. But the thing that we're looking for right now is in the debugging section, it's near the top, uh, USB debugging. So just click that. It's going to uh, ask you, are you sure you want to do that? And then just click OK. So there you go. Now you have your device set up. So we're done with this part. All right, I just paused the video so I can stop my uh, virtual device because it might crash the uh, recording software. I didn't want to take any risks. Uh, so what you want to do for the next part is want to install the drivers. So if you're running on a generic Android device, like, uh, like a Nexus phone, you want to go into the SDK manager and you want to install the Google USB drivers down in the extra section. So if you're running on Nexus phone, I'm pretty sure HTC and a couple of other manufacturers is the same thing like that, you want to install this driver. If you're running on something like a Samsung device, you want to install the drivers from their website. You're going to have to install the software that they have called Keys, the K-I-E-S. Uh, you install that and you get the driver. Uh, I have this one installed, but I'm using a Samsung device. I installed both just in case. I need to use a non-Samsung device. Uh, but basically, if you have another manufacturer, just try with this one. If it doesn't work, then just go on their website and download those drivers for your uh, device. Okay, so install that. Like check mark it, click the install button, accept the license, and it's going to install. Then, just plug in your device using the USB cable that it came with. Make sure that the screen is on and you have your password entered or anything like that, like it's unlocked and you're in your menu now your uh, home menu on your device and then all you want to do is click run now I was hoping it would give me a s selection anyways if it recognizes your device that's good it'll choose it so that's the device ID I have it's going to install the APK onto it and it's going to load up in a couple of seconds. It gave me an error but it still ran anyways. And then you should have it running on that device. So I'm going to talk a little bit about debugging. So um, if you're running on an actual device you have a little bit of 
information about the installation of the app. Uh, it's not very pertinent unless you uh, didn't install the right drivers or something like that. Uh, but if you want to actually debug your app for bugs or things like that, you want to go into Logcat. If you don't have this Logcat window uh, in Eclipse, you want to go into Window, Show View, and then Other. You go in the Android section and then Logcat's there. If you're running on um, on something like Android Studio or something like that, it's probably going to be there by default since it's a uh, Android IDE. It's meant for that. And then in here you'll have the log for all the different uh, messages that you output or bugs. So your device will run the app and then send the bugs over USB so you can actually check them out and fix any bugs that you would have. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this actually also works for a virtual device, just so you guys know. And that's pretty much all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you have any friends who would think this video is important or interesting to watch, uh, please share it with them. And also, I'm going to do a similar tutorial series for the HTML5 with GWT and eventually also for iOS. So you guys can deploy your libgdx games on all the devices that libgdx supports. So I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.